Aloha. Hey, this is William. And uh, we're ICS 100 here. And uh, we'll talk today about primary and secondary storage and how that works. OK, so let's mosey into our first uh, few slides here and see what we got. We have data storage. And we'll talk a bit about back in the day, say around the 60s or probably earlier. The data storage, OK, so we're saving files. And in the files, we had text and numbers. And text is uh, pretty much English letters and punctuation. Uh, and numbers, well, I think you all know what numbers are. And it uh, didn't take up so much space. OK, and also very simple encoding. So pretty much, uh, there's like three or four ways to encode numbers. Uh, might be a whole number, or it could be a decimal number. And then text, uh, pretty much, uh, I think we talked about before that, the ASCII codes. We have a certain code for each, each uh, English letter. And that was it. Okay. Now, uh, these days, it was, or it is, <laughs> we have files that take up much more space, they're a lot more complicated. And if you think a bit about it, well, they store music, photos, videos, uh, all kinds of other data. Okay, uh, you know, from you know games and uh, you know all kind of different calendars, all, all kind of different programs. All right, so it's a lot, a lot, a lot more complex, a lot more space that's needed. So data storage, right? Uh, how are we going to store this stuff? Uh, storage, give me more storage, please. Okay. Let's see uh, what we came up with, with the, the data storage. OK, so computer scientists, uh, they were trying to think of what to do with the storage. And uh, we got all this data. We have something called secondary storage. OK, so it's going to store all these different files that we have. And uh, you know, now I'm already talking about secondary storage. You're probably wondering, well, what's, what's the primary storage here? Hmm. OK, well, let's, let's talk about primary storage a bit uh, as well. So the primary storage uh, has a fancy name to it. That fancy name is Random Access Memory. And now we have our TLA, our three-letter acronym for today, uh, RAM, Random Access Memory. OK. Uh, so we store our programs and our data that go, kind of goes with these programs. Um, while the uh, CPU, so we have the central processing unit, it's the main part of the c computer that's, that's running instructions, OK? Uh, and as it's, it's running these instructions, um, it needs a place to store the data that's going on, OK? So it's just running, doing instructions and getting some data, OK? So it's got to go to this uh, random access memory. And it says random, but random really means uh, it can access any part of the memory. So it doesn't have to go just one place and, and, and just access it there. It's, it can go here, here. OK, it can jump around in different parts of the memory. So um, it's not like random events going on in the computer. OK. At any rate, so you got the CPU, and then it's, it's pulling from the, or, and also putting data into the, into the RAM. So let's get a little bit more details on this RAM stuff. All right, and we're not talking about sheep, neither. OK, so again, uh, we're talking about primary storage. And it's volatile, OK? So that basically means if you turn the computer off, OK, or uh, power goes out, uh-oh, uh, the programs and data stored in RAM are gone. Ah! They're gone. They're, they're not there anymore, OK? So that's OK. We'll, we'll use the secondary storage to store things for long term. But short term, you know, if you turn electricity off, it's just gone. OK, also, the RAM, it's, it's actually kind of small, relatively. OK, so it's hard to store all the programs, all the data that we, that we have, that we need. So the computer needs another place to store this stuff, all right? So that's where the, the, the secondary storage comes in. So kind of two things going on. Again, so it's just space-wise, um, we'll have the secondary storage. And then also, um, 
just uh, for long-term storage, uh, we need a place to put things. So again, the RAM is volatile. If you turn electricity off, power goes off, it's gone. But as you notice, when you turn your computer back on, uh, the data is still there. It ain't gone. Um, so that's just the primary storage. The secondary storage is where we'll put uh, all our data. So let's, let's talk now about secondary storage. OK, so our secondary storage. Let's see. So two qualities that are useful for the data storage here. Uh, we talked about volatile. Now we'll talk about non-volatile. So it's non-volatile memory. So data and programs do not disappear when the power is off. You got that? All right. So when we turn it off, uh, everything's still there, relatively speaking. Okay. Also, the, uh, compared to the RAM, the storage capacity is a lot uh, larger holds more stuff, more, more data, okay? So it's, it's long-term storage, and then uh, still the data is still stored there even when the power is off. Okay, what else about uh, secondary storage, though? So there's two actions that the computer takes with the secondary storage. And pretty simple, it actually reads. All right, you got secondary storage, and it reads or accesses the data in those files. It was reading them, okay? And then what else it does it do? It, it writes to the, the secondary storage. So it saves things. Okay, so it reads things, it access, accesses the data, and then it also it writes or saves. When you do a save, that's, that's what's going on. Okay, so if you notice, if you write into a file and then you don't save it, then it's, 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 it's still in the um, RAM, but it's not in... The, the secondary storage. Okay, so you press save and then poof, then the secondary storage. Uh, it writes to secondary storage and it's saved, so to speak. All right? Okay, so that's how things work. So um, well, there's, there's four parts we're going to talk about too with the secondary storage. So let's, let's look at that next. And so what do we have? Four major aspects. Okay. Um, one is the media. Okay, and then also the capacity. Then we got the uh, storage devices, and then access speed. So you got to kind of think of these four things when you think about the, the secondary storage. Okay, so first of all, let's, let's talk about the media. So what is that exactly? Okay, so media is actually the, uh, the physical device that's storing the, the data and programs. Okay, and we have a little disk there, so that's, that's one thing. So it's a physical device. It's something that you can, you can, you can pick up and touch, um, unless it's too small to find, I guess. Yeah, the thing's getting smaller and smaller these days. But, or it might be like a, a hard drive, okay? So it's usually in a, cased in a little box, so you can't get air or dust in, in there. Um, you know, and e e even, you know, the media, if you think about the cloud, well, where's the media on the cloud? Like, sort, stuff's just stored out there, man, on the cloud, dude. Uh, so even that, it's stored somewhere. It's some media, some, inside some warehouse, you got a bunch of computers that we call servers, and then they have hard drives, or, or they got other kind of physical parts where things are stored, okay? Um, so that's what the media is when we talk about computers. It's a physical... Um, what uh, device that actually holds that that data? Okay. All right. So let's see the the next one part. Next part here, part two. Okay. So what else we have with the the secondary storage? We have capacity. Okay. So that's the maximum amount of data that the storage medium can hold. Okay. So uh, whenever you you know go to the store and say you're going to buy some kind of um, well, a lot of times you buy an external hard drive. Uh, lately, I saw them at Costco. It was like two or three terabytes of data. Like, I don't know, it was like under 100 bucks even. So it's, and it's only like the size of a pack of cards. It's pretty small. So, um, but anyway, so, you know, maybe you can hold a terabyte of data. Um, so like a, you know, it's a huge amount of data. So, you know, you might use that more for, uh, store movies or photographs, that kind of thing. But um, maybe, you know, you're just storing your homework for uh, ICS uh, 100 or something. So 
it's not going to take up a terabyte of data, I'll tell you that much. All right, but the maximum amount is it's the max that we're talking about for capacity. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. We also have a storage device. Okay, so a storage device is um, the hardware you actually use to read from the storage media uh, or write to the storage media. Okay. So uh, somehow you got you to get that data and you got to read that data. So that's, that's the actual device that's working there. Okay, so you're reading or writing and it's, it's some device is called the storage device. Okay, so let's, let's do the last one, last, uh, last slide here. And uh, we have access speed. So, you know, it seems like um, as, as more advances are made with computers, uh, less people like to wait on computers. So... Uh, same thing here, so it's a time that the storage device reads the, da the data or it writes the data to the storage media. Okay, so there's a certain speed and that's called the access speed. And again, we're trying to get those speeds uh, faster and faster, we can do more data, and I guess people uh, uh, can wait less in that case. Okay, um, that's all I have for y'all today, so uh, we'll see y'all at the end of the show. All right, aloha. <laughs>